Procreate 4.1 is out. It's got a bunch of new features baked into it and that's what we're talking about today. It's been a busy week around here. I've had a lot of things to talk about. It's pretty exciting. And one of the things that I was anticipating happening, because Procreate has been previewing it for weeks, is the release of version 4.1. Seems about every year around this time, they release kind of a big version update. This is this year's. Uh, it's not quite as massive as what we saw last year, but there's still a lot of stuff in there. And I just want to kind of go over these, talk about them and talk about the cool ways we can use some of these new features. So here we are in Procreate. We're gonna take a look at some of the new features they've added to version 4.1. The first thing I wanna talk about is what they're calling the Liquify filter. If I tap on the magic wand in the upper left-hand corner, you can see it, it's, it's along with adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on Liquify. Along the bottom, we get all of these options. And I'm just gonna take my pencil here and I'm just going to push on my line art. And you can see you can come in here and warp it. Now, if you don't like it, there's some other options along the bottom. I can select reconstruct and it will actually come in here. And as I put my pencil down, it will reconstruct all the messiness that I've created there, which is a little bit slower than just hitting undo, but you can kind of go in and reconstruct areas if you pushed it too much. There's some other stuff in here too. For example, there's a, a twirl effect, so I can come in here and, and I can twirl that line art. And now when I first saw this, I thought it was a little bit gimmicky, and, and still today, I'm not sure how I'm gonna use it in my artwork, but once I started getting my hands on it and started using it, I realized this is cooler than I thought it was at first. I'm gonna open my layers. And as you noticed before, my line art layer was being morphed, but the other ones weren't. But if I come in here and I just select a layer, I swipe the wrong way. If I select a layer, so now I have two layers selected. Now let me go over to that magic wand, select liquify. Now when I twirl, what's gonna happen? It's gonna grab all of the layers that I have selected. And I think what's really kind of amazing about this is how fast it works. There's no slow down, it doesn't have to think. It just works. But we have other things, we have pinch and expand. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And if I take the push, using both of those layers, I can come in here and I could change his eyebrow around, make him look kind of angry or confused, that sort of thing. I thought that the lines would get kind of blurry. I'm gonna expand his nose out while I'm here just to make him look a little bit different. It's kind of fun to just kind of come in here and play change people's expressions, mess with your line art. It doesn't look like it's been morphed. I mean, it, it kind of looks like it's been morphed. I thought the lines would get kind of blurry and kind of chunky or just weird looking, but it holds up pretty well, kind of surprisingly well. The next thing I want to talk about is the warp and transform things that they've added to this. Since I had those two layers selected, I'm going to tap on my arrow tool, which brings up these options. And down below at the bottom, you'll see this menu just popped up. We have free form, but I can tap on distort, I can tap on warp, uh, and they do different things. For example, distort, I can grab an angle and I can distort him if I need to, which is nice if I wanna do different kind of perspectives or something with a character that already exists. Uh, warp is the new fancy stuff. It treats this like he's a piece of paper and I could just take one of those pieces and pull it down uh, over itself. So that that's some neat stuff too. I, overall, uh, I'm not sure how I would use some of this stuff, but I do have to say how it's implemented and how quickly it works and how seamlessly it works without any delay or having to think is, is really impressive, especially on my, you know, two and a half year old iPad Pro. And then if I don't like any of it, I can always hit reset and, and it brings it all back. So I'm going to tap off that. The other thing that's come in handy that I haven't had the opportunity to really dive into and play it with too much yet is some of the things they've done with their gesture controls. If I click on the wrench and then go to preferences, the very bottom, they've redone a lot of these gesture controls. Some of this stuff was here before, but they've added a lot to it. For example, your layer select. Now you can actually select layers just by using gestures. So if I toggle this on, which will hold a finger on the canvas and will invoke layer select, you probably saw something. It actually turned off the eyedropper. There was a little uh, mention of that on the eyedropper layer, a little warning sign that said, hey, you're, you're ruining your eyedropper. But now if I want to, I can go in and oops, let me get rid of that menu. And I could select this and it's gonna say, hey, there's layer 10. I can select layer 10. So if you're in that mode where you're trying to select layers instead of trying to do your eyedropper, you can do that. But you can do a lot more with this as well. For example, maybe I do want that eyedropper on. I can toggle that off and instead I can just use touch to grab a layer. I could use that little square touch to grab a layer. I'm gonna go back to my eyedropper and turn this on. 
because I like the touch hold eyedropper. So you can come in here and really customize your gestures. And as you can see, there's way more in here. There's a race, there's, there's smudge. There's way more in here than just selecting a layer and the eyedropper tool. You can now share an entire set of brushes. You've always been able to share a single brush, but now I can tap on my brush set. And one of the options here is to share it and it'll export that for me and I don't wanna actually export that right now, but that's an option as well. There's two more things I wanna talk about. One is the symmetry. I'm gonna create a new canvas for this. Let's go up to our gear icon again, and this time I'm gonna be in the canvas area, and the very first thing we have is the drawing guide. Now, in the past, what the drawing guide was was basically a perspective guide, but now if we tap on edit drawing guide underneath that, we have more options. We still have our perspective under here, but you see we have our 2D grid, we have an isometric grid, uh, and we have symmetry. Down below on the bottom are a whole bunch of our options. For example, right now we have vertical symmetry going on, but I can also make it horizontal. I can also just do a quadrant, which will draw on, on four sides, or a radial one. I'm gonna stick with vertical for now just to show you how it's done. And also, you don't need to just do this up and down. You can grab these points and change it however however you want to. I could also grab that middle line and move it back and forth. So you can position it where you need it to be before you start drawing. You could go ahead and click done to get out of there. You can see there's this little blue line in the middle of the screen. That tells you that it's on. So anything I draw on one side, I'm gonna have going on on the other side. That looks horrible. Let me, let me, try, let me try that again. So if I wanna draw a little character, I can do that. It's perfectly symmetrical. Works out pretty well. All right, I'm gonna stop drawing now. Okay, I lied, I'm gonna give him a smile. Gonna tap on that gear up in the left corner again. I'm gonna hit Edit Drawing Guide. And this time I'm gonna select Radial down at the bottom. Now I'm gonna click Done, and now anytime I draw anything, you know, anybody can just scribble on here and make something look halfway decent, which is pretty neat. One thing I did run across that's worth noting is I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna to toggle off drawing guide. And I thought what would happen is it would start drawing normally when I start drawing, but it's not, I still have that on. When you wanna to toggle that off, you have to go to the layer, tap on the layer and turn off drawing assist on the layer. I'm gonna go back to my gear. I'm gonna turn my drawing guide back on and I'm gonna to go to edit drawing guide again because there's a couple other things I wanna show you. First of all, a 2D grid is just that. It's a nice little 2D grid. Down at the bottom, I can change the, the thickness of that grid. I can change the opacity of it. I can change the grid size. That's way too big. I, I like smaller grids, something like that. And of course, if I tag on assisted drawing, it is going to draw along that grid. So I'm gonna come back here and now everything I draw is gonna be on the grid, which is which is nice if you're you're into that kind of thing. It, it works very similarly to the perspective drawing if you've had the opportunity to play with that at all. Gonna go back into our grid, edit drawing guide. This is the one I'm excited about is this isometric stuff. I've done some isometric drawing in the past. It's really fun to have this here in Procreate now. I've actually gone onto the web and copied images of isometric grids and pasted them into my work before to draw with. No more, I could do it the right way. The last thing that I did wanna talk about is the time-lapse. Everybody knows that you can export those really cool time-lapse drawings from Procreate, but now you can export shorter ones, like a 30-second clip. So if you don't wanna export the entire thing to social media, you could just grab a 30-second clip. Gonna be honest, I haven't done this yet. Let's see what happens. Gonna go to my gear, gonna go to video. I'm gonna say export time-lapse drawing, and there we go, there's my option. So I can either do a full length or I can do the 30 seconds, simple. Easy. So that is Procreate 4.1. A couple of folks have asked if I'm going to be updating my Procreate course over on Udemy. The answer is yes and no. I'm not gonna be overhauling it, but over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be adding a couple of lessons at the end that talk about some of the new features and how those can be incorporated into your artwork. So if you've already signed up for the class, look forward to that. I'll definitely be posting an announcement. You'll probably be getting an email or a message of some kind from Udemy about that. And if you're interested in that course, there's a coupon down below in the description. You can get 50% off. So that is Procreate 4.1. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, subscribe. As always, I love it when you like these videos. It helps other people find them. That's all I've got for now. I'll talk to you later.